The Keys Loop is one of the most well-known military maneuvers in the Halo fiction. Executed by then-commander Jacob Keyes, the move was an act of strategic brilliance, desperation, and ultimately resulted in one of the few human victories since the death of Admiral Cole. On the morning of July 17th, the UNSC remote scanning outpost Archimedes detected a large silhouette in slipspace headed towards the Sigma Octanus system. Ensign William Lovell considered whether it was a group of Covenant ships or a rogue asteroid, but ultimately decided not to raise an alarm and filed his scheduled report like normal. Meanwhile, Commander Jacob Keyes was patrolling near Sigma Octanus IV in a Halberd-class destroyer, the UNSC Iroquois. These destroyers are equipped with a twin-linked 1170mm, 647mm Mach battery, three Shiva-class nuclear missiles, and 26 oversized Archer missile pods. When Keyes sees Ensign Lovell's report, he's reminded of a paper by Vijad 084, a Spartan II washout, which discussed how several objects traveling in slipspace can appear as a single mass. Realizing that the mass is in fact a Covenant fleet, Keyes contacts Fleetcom to inform them of the situation. Unfortunately, no ships would be close enough to provide help in time. At 0320 hours UNSC Standard Military Time, the Covenant fleet emerged from slipspace, made up of a DDS-class carrier, a destroyer, and two frigates. The carrier and destroyer both equipped with energy projectors and all four ships equipped with plasma turrets, any single ship would be more than a match for a single UNSC destroyer. The four together would be able to annihilate the Iroquois. But instead, the carrier and destroyer immediately broke off towards Sigma Octanus IV while the frigates turned to engage the Iroquois, their firepower more than enough. In response, and aware of his chances, Keyes set the Iroquois on a collision course with the destroyer while the frigates each fired a single plasma torpedo towards the UNSC ship. As they did, Keyes ordered the Archer missile pods readied, Mac guns to charge, and had a nuke fired in what appeared to be the wrong direction. The plasma torpedoes from the frigates quickly approached, but Keyes managed to avoid them at the last second with the Iroquois' emergency thrusters. The ship then resumed its collision course. Behind them, the plasma torpedoes changed course, tracking the Iroquois. Just as the ship was about to impact the Covenant destroyer, Keyes issued an emergency course correction, just grazing the destroyer's shields. The tracking plasma torpedoes then impacted the destroyer, eliminating its shields. A heavy salvo of Archer missiles would then cripple the ship. Caught in Sigma Octanus IV's gravity well, the destroyer would burn up on re-entry. As soon as they approached the planet, Keyes ordered the Iroquois into a tight orbit around Sigma Octanus IV. His ship had taken severe damage thus far, forcing Keyes to shut down the ship's engines. The Mac guns were also slowly losing power. There wasn't much time left. Keyes ordered both Macs loaded and forward Archer pods to be ready. As the Iroquois finished its orbit around the planet, they were confronted by the two Covenant frigates, both preparing another round of torpedoes. However, the new Keys had launched before had now drifted close enough to the frigates. Upon detonation, both frigates lost their shields. The two Mac rounds and the Archer missiles were then more than enough to finish the frigates off. The carrier, now without its escort, had begun to head out system. Iroquois had sustained heavy damage during the fight, and though the Covenant had managed to land troops on Sigma Octanus IV, Keys had single-handedly held off a superior force. This would allow time for a support fleet to arrive, and later for the UNSC to secure a real victory against the Covenant, both in space and on the ground. Keyes' actions during the battle were enough to earn him a promotion to captain, and Ensign William Lovell was transferred to the Iroquois. Though the Ensign had not properly identified the Covenant threat, his report did allow Keyes to prepare for the initial fleet and warn the rest of the UNSC what was coming. Perhaps most impressive of all, however, was that Keyes' victory had been achieved without the aid of a shipboard AI. The Iroquois had been rolled out of the space dock three months prior to the battle and was left without an AI due to short supply. Ship AIs usually help control various functions including weapons and point defense while running necessary calculations, all of which had been left in the hands of Keyes and his crew during the battle. It is with good reason that Keyes and his tactics are well remembered. Thank you for watching Space Dock, and a huge thank you to Halo Cannon for producing this fantastic episode. If you haven't already, I'd encourage you all to go and subscribe to his channel, and please check the description for a link to the playlist of videos produced for this week's collaborations.